Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank the administrations of the Ibn al Haytham Eye Hospital and the organizing committee to give me this opportunity to uh, chairing this session with my best friend, Dr. Ammar. And uh, before I start the uh, presentation, I would like to present a video about the vitreotin surgeons in Iraq. Uh, I honestly, I didn't expect uh, this number of VR surgeons in Iraq, and I'm very proud to know that we have a lot of VR surgeons in Iraq. And I expect, and I hope, in the near future, they will cover all the needs of the patients for this service. So I will show a video, uh, a short video, just for sure information about the VR surgeons in Iraq. I hope you enjoy it. شكرا دكتور فريد دكتور فريد دكتور فريد دكتور فريد اوكي شكرا جزيلا دكتور فريد لا ننسى انه الفضل الكبير في ادخال جراحه الشبكيه والسائل الزجاجي في العراق كان للرواد الاستاذ دكتور ماجد سليمان ودكتور فارس البكري هم اول من ادخلوا جراحه الشبكيه والسائل الزجاجي العراق ومنهم تعلمنا خطواتنا الاولى شكرا دكتور فريد دكتور فريد البرزنتيشن ذا فيرست برزنتيشن ويل بي دكتور فريد اون هايلودوتومي فور ساب هايلويد هيموريج رايت Yeah, the management of the premacular hemorrhage by using the YAG posterior hyalidotomy. The premacular hemorrhage, it's, it's can be caused by many problems. 
uh, commonly by diabetic retinopathy, proliferative, or probably rated retinal vein occlusion, retinal macular aneurysm rupture, or age retinal macular degenerations, some bleeding problems, the leukemia, and unlikely to be done, but it's, it can be happened in Lasix, and uh, in some patients after Sorry? vigorous exercises, uh, called vasalpha retinopathy. And this, sorry. No, uh, can I do something, please? Just cancel. Uh, just once. I'll keep it like that. All right. Yeah. All right. So the, the, the available management for the premacular hemorrhage are first of, uh, observation, vitrectomy, using the gas, or doing argon laser, posterior hydrotomy, and the YAG is the, what I'm going to talk about. So let us start with the first option. Observations. Give the patient an appointment every now and then to see if the, if the bleeding is improved. But uh, it could be happened over a, a period of weeks or sometimes months. But this it might cause problems to the macula because contact of blood with the macula for a long time causing toxicity to photoreceptors and the patient may be ended, ended up with a cleared hemorrhage with the low vision. Doing vitrectomy is a good option, but you know, vitrectomy has problems and complications. It might cause cataract or progression of nuclear sclerosis. It might do causing iatrogenic breaks or even post operative PVR. Using the YAG laser, uh, argon laser, to open the posterior hyaloid to give a, a window for the blood to clear it from the subhyaloid space to the intra-gel uh, space is possible, but using the argon laser photocoagulation might causing coagulation of the blood at the site of the shot, so it will not allow more blood to move down to the vitreous cavity. Using the gas with the PTA, T, TPA, a tissue plasminogen activator, this is the defibrinogenic agent, it might increase the risk of bleeding, especially in patients who have already have susceptibility for the bleeding. Using the AC, which is the good options, I feel, it's, uh, it's easy to be done, ambulatory can be done in the OPD. It's painless procedure has no problems for the, not causing any problems for the, uh, like uh, PVR, or even if you want to do vitrectomy later, it will not change the outcome. There is unlikely to, to have complication, but possible, causing macular holes, or even retinal detachment from the uh, eotrogenic breaks. But, the blood over the retina of the macula act as a shield for protections of the retina from the effect of the AG laser. In previous reports, this is, this is the, here the modification I've done. Before, what they are doing, they are doing YAG laser, which is, this is not a new treatment, it's old, already known, but I've done some modifications. In previous reports, what they are doing, they make an opening in the posterior hyaloid by YAG laser and send the patient home and maybe give an appointment after a week or a month, hoping that the that blood will clear it over this time and they will do next uh, assessment. 
The modification I've done is, I'm not sending a patient home. When I do the laser to the push high load, open, make an opening, I keep doing more than one shot until the fovea is cleared completely in the same session, then I send the patient home. Why is this? To make sure the blood is no more in contact with the fovea. So it protects the fovea from risk of toxicity with, uh, from, uh, when it's contact with the blood. Second thing, if the patient in, in, in the coming subsequent visit still have significant submacular hemorrhage, if you are not clearing the, the hemorrhage in the same session and you defer it for this another session later, the thickness of blood in prima become less. So risk of endangering the retina is more by doing more IAG laser on over a thin film of premacular blood. Right. So I've, I have a patient with a 42 years old Asian man. He developed right eye visual loss after forceful straining, vision drop to counting finger. And he's got this big submacular hemorrhage, uh, premacular hemorrhage, sorry. And uh, I choose to the inferior, just below in, in the fear part of the, of the uh, premacular hemorrhage. And uh, I did it twice or three times until the blood is cleared from the, from the fovea. And the, the vision corrected to 36 after one hour from the session. And the next day to 6 to 12. And six months to 6 6. The second case. Is a pregnant lady. She expected to have birth in two weeks' time. Her vision dropped to hand motion in the left eye. Also, the same strategy of doing YAG lasers done using uh, YAG laser more than one opening until the blood is cleared completely from the macula. In 10 minutes, the vision improved to 36 in seven days to 6-6, six, six, and no complications happened. So there is a recommendation for best doing YAG halidotomy. The first is choose the thickest part of the blood. And this you can assess it by clinically, or sometime, if you have very expert ultrasonographer, you can't tell you where is the thickest part of the uh, premacular hemorrhage is quite big. And you have to avoid the sensitive structures, vessels, fovea, and disc. Uh, I, I, I feel that using the fundus contact lens is the ideal. It is very uh, uh, useful to focus the aiming beam exactly on the posterior hyaloid and reduce the risk of endangering the retina. And you, start, you can start with the low power three millijoule and you can titrate it increasing until you have opening in the posterior hyaloid. And thank you. <laughs>